Um, Vici are the first ones to start escalating things a little bit more towards team fight with the Keeper of the Light pickup. And Aster going for a very early timber saw grab, so uh, this could still be, I mean, it could be off lane, it could be mid. I don't know if Timbersaw really wants to lane up against the Grimstroke and the Jug, so I think the plan is to try and have the Timber up against the Sven, remaining. but I guess we'll have to see what happens. Maybe the Timbersaw can do okay Five in lane if remaining. he's got the help from Oracle, say. If they if he gets gone on with the ink swell and the silence and the spin, they can just uh, throw you know they can purge off the ink swell and then just throw a edict onto Timbersaw and he'll be fine at that point. Just block all the spin damage. But this is a very curious Timbersaw pick. Like I don't really see what's a hundred percent motivating it here. But they've got a couple of different ways that they could run these lanes. The lone droid is already going to be decent against the. Will O Wisp from the Keeper of the Light. Um, both teams decent push. Lone Druid pretty good at taking out buildings. Juggernaut's got the sustain, and they've got plenty of physical damage. Both teams decent at taking out Roshan as well. Uh, slight team fight edge to Vici right now with the Coddle, but nothing too crazy. Hmm, I guess we'll just have to see. And Aster do not have the last pick here, so Vici are going to have the benefit of uh, last pick for mid. Could see something like Alina coming in for them. Uh, Beastmaster is the ban for Vici, so they're thinking it's uh, it's like an off lane hero coming in. And then it's Timber mid, Lone Druid safe lane. Is there some kind of killer aggro tri lane that Aster can put together? Like, can they put the Lone Druid and Timbersaw just in their respective solo lanes, and then Oracle ET plus something else goes, goes aggro here? Remaining. I don't really think so. I don't know what carry they would, or Five what core would remaining. go in that lane to just kill the Jug reliably. Seems a little bit, a little bit difficult. Hmm. I think Aster ban, I think he banned like Lena. No, okay, ban the OD. It is a good it is certainly a bit of a counter to the both the Lone Druid and the Timbersaw, so sensible ban. Didn't think about it. It is something that Vici do play. I think they've also they first picked it quite a bit at the beginning of this patch. Haven't been really picking it so much now, but uh, all right, Aster, what do you what do you got? What is what is going to slot into this lineup to make everything make sense? Because right now things are looking a little bit a little bit Five weird and wonderful. But I'm always down for some interesting Dota. Oh, and yeah, I guess I didn't even notice, but what, Fade is out, and is this, this is Aggressive? Okay, so Aggressive is replacing Fade and not Yang, was that? Let's, where's, what was the news here? This is a couple of days ago, right? Da, 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 da. Turn to pack. Oh, they were thinking of moving Yang to position 4 or 5 and kicking one of their supports, okay. Interesting. And now Puck is the pick for at what? Uh. Alright. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And now, okay. Well, Death Prophet is the final pick. Who is who is playing what? I need I need to see what is happening on this. Uh... Okay, so Mushi is playing Puck. XXS is playing Timbersaw. Silar on the Lone Druid. We've got Yang on Keeper of the Light support. Hmm. What is what is going on here? This is this is very weird. Anyway, let's get some overlays. Okay, so what aggressive is playing okay, aggressive is playing three. Huh. 
Yeah, I didn't even. Sorry about that, guys. I did. I didn't even realize. I was. I was talking about Mushi and like talking about. I didn't even realize that aggressive was in here and that they didn't have fade. So, both teams making some changes, and this is that they're, they're completely. Well, not completely different, but pretty different rosters from what they were playing with uh, the last time that they met. So this will be really interesting to see. Uh, let's let's get ourselves into it. So I imagine that the Puck is just playing mid. Uh, puck versus Death Prophet, actually not a completely terrible matchup for the Puck, though the silence from the DP does start to get pretty annoying a little bit later on. I think that's kind of how things go there. Um, I don't know where the support's going to play. None of the cores on this team actually want their supports to help them at all. I don't know what Boboka and Fenrir are going to do. Lone Druid doesn't really want any help. Timbersaw doesn't... Timbersaw might end up getting a little bit of help. I guess maybe they lane with the Timber, but... You know, they can't really go and assist the Puck all that much. So... We'll have to see. Alright, let's get down to it. We got DY on Grimstroke, we got Prepare Aggressive or Happy on the Sven, we've got Ori on the Death Prophet, Yang on the Keeper of the Light, and Paparazzi on the Juggernaut. Over on the other side, we've got Boboka on your Elder Titan, we've got Fenrir on the Oracle, Silars on the Lone Druid, Mushi on Puck, and XXS on this Timbersaw. Looks like they are trying to match the Timbersaw up against the Sven here. Uh, definitely does not want to be in the lane against the Juggernaut and the Grimstroke, and Vici already making an early aggressive move here. Mushi's gonna break the smoke. Looks like he should be okay. Doesn't have the phase shift skill, but he does have Illusory Orb to get out of here, so... Looking like Aster should just grab the top two Bouncy Runes, and Vici gonna grab those bottom two. Uh, I want to see if Vici are going to keep their supports together and just try for an immediate kill at bottom, or if they are going to send people up to try and help out this Jug. But Boko with his boots first has some punching ready. I mean, doesn't have any damage just yet, but all right, we'll drive Paparazzi all the way back. And Vici going to get a little bit greedy here. They're trying to rotate everybody over to the top rune. It looks like just leaving Dy down here to grab the bottom ones. Timber not feeling confident enough. XXS just waiting inside of the tree line, so it looks like it is still going to be that 2-2 two -two split, but uh, they are swapping the lanes around to put presumably the the Jug and the Grimstroke up against this Timbersaw. What, Paparazzi is just going to help with the block? Is that is that his plan here? Okay, sure. Nope, alright. Decides that Ori doesn't need the help, he's just watching him. And I guess he's just waiting to see the lanes. He hasn't seen anything yet, and he's trying to figure out where exactly he needs to go. But he spots the Elder Titan top now, and will start running towards bottom. I imagine he's going to miss a CS or two for doing this, but he does end up in the lane that he wants to be in, so... Alright. Not too bad. Uh, Fenrir immediately coming in here and getting the D ward on the pull. Again, Timbersaw really wants a lot of experience and doesn't really want his help, so getting access to this pull it's going to be very important. Eh, fully channeled Fortune's End onto the Grimstroke. It's going to be a little bit of free damage, but no chance for a kill off of that. Can they get this range creep deny? Yes, they can. Nicely done. Mushu doing pretty well so far over at mid. Just CSing under the tower. Looks like he may have uh, overblocked a little bit, but that does mean he can get a bit more aggressive now and uh, try and play up under this tower. Make Ori's life a little bit more difficult. Ooh, some damage coming in on the Silar. Aggressive getting up in his face. Knows that he is going to have the Chakra Magic a little bit later on in the lane. So he can just keep the spam going. But so far, lanes seem to be going okay for Aster. I think that this Oracle is actually going to be enough to keep this Timber nice and safe. So even though this lane would normally be kind of scary. Oh, actually, you can't purge it off with the spin. Never mind. That is a lot of damage onto the Timber Saw. I hadn't thought about that, but there you go. They actually can't purge that off. It is going to help once they get the gets the edict, but for now, the timber is actually going to have to be a little bit careful. Does heal straight back up? He's going to be okay. Top lane, bit more damage under Silas Barry does have a resummon ready to go, and is CSing pretty nicely so far. Though aggressive also for his part, doing pretty well. What do you have to, Boboke? He's got, he's got some damage here. 
He's gonna get caught by the blast though, needing to be a little bit careful. Five stick charges will keep him up. So he's gonna be okay. Just lots of damage being traded back and forth. DUI trying to interrupt this pull. They also blocked out the big camp over here. Really trying to prevent this, but at least Fenrir does have the small camp to work with, and he is gonna get the range creep denied. XXS, almost level 3, so a little bit of a survivability boost for him at that point. Does Oracle have level 2, though? He does, but chooses not to skill the Edict, actually going a little bit more aggressive and picking up the Purifying Flames. I don't think they really have any kill potential in this lane, so I kind of wish he'd just gone for the Edict at level 2, but never mind that. Mushi at mid. Fast start, but now things evening out with the Death Prophet, and the DP actually has three creeps to see us under this tower, so Mushi going to be a little bit behind. Uh, in terms of the late game, I feel like you got to favor Vici a little bit. The Lone Druid does kind of fall off somewhat, uh, and they've got Puck and Timbersaw, so once BKBs start happening for Vici, then I feel like Aster's Draft is gonna be in a little bit of trouble after that point. Silar is just going for a Midas this game. We've been seeing a lot of Midas Lifestealer recently. And uh, looks like a couple of the other carries are picking up on this trend as well. But Boka oh, just munches his way through that tree. Yang trying to block him out, but no problem at all. Do they have another stun soon? Three seconds to go. But Boka just continuing to make space for Silar. Look at you look at Silar. He's just not even coming over, not getting involved. Just wants this free CS, get all those denies. Do you have an invis rune down here? Ooh, Silar's bear actually gonna get brought down by Yang. That's some very nice gold for the Keeper of the Light. All right, and DUI with an invis wandering over to mid. This was scouted by a Radiant Observer Ward, so shouldn't really do too much. And for Aster, all of their playmaking potential really just comes in once uh, Mushi gets level six, so. Their early game is very much on uh, Mushi's shoulders. He's gonna get silenced up here at mid. Should have known that this was coming, but looks like he might still get worked down the tower. Might kill off DY. He gets a turnaround. Mushi gets the first blood. He will still be brought down, but pretty nice for him. Making the best of a bad situation is still a lot of gold for Ori, but well, at least Mushi gets that kill. All right, DY, just gonna play courier for these blades of attack. Yeah, heading straight down bottom. And five minute bounty runes are gonna go Aster's way. They're actually gonna get, oh my God, they're gonna get all four. I mean, they're not the biggest bounties, but still, that is a lot of gold for them. Mushi with a few more points up in the waning rift here. Not a three one one going for the uh, 2 2 0. Oh, 2 2 1. Don't mind me. I'm still warming up, guys. I got a long day of Dota ahead of me. We've got. Uh, I didn't even talk about the overall schedule. So, this is. Uh, we've got four teams in this minor qualifier. Uh, there's going to be three back to back best of threes today to determine the first qualifying team. Uh, and then after that. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna have two best of threes to determine the second one. So one of these uh, four teams is gonna be punching their ticket to the minor by the end of today. And yeah, what's the next match? It's RNG versus Room 310. Would be very juicy if we had uh, Aster versus Room 310, since that is D Stone's new squad, and he was kicked off of this this team. So. A little bit of rivalry going on there. Timbersaw now level 6 seems to be doing just fine at bottom. I was a bit worried for him in this lane, but he seems okay. I have not been able to kill him. We have the point up in the Phantom's Embrace now, but I just don't know if they have the damage for it. They are bringing the Keeper of the Light down here. Looks like they do want to try for this kill. Alright, Coddle sizing it up with the blast. They get the silence coming in. Paparazzi, they've got the stun. Just barely catching him as XXS tried to chain away. And that little bit extra that they needed coming in from the Keeper of the Light. They will grab that kill. I think he would have been okay if not for the Coddle. But that little bit of extra damage. Just what they needed to finish him off. Mushi with two salves in his inventory at mid. Alright. I guess anticipating that he might go for a dive, or that he's just going to need it against the sustained spam from Ori. Silar, alright, he's got that Midas. 
Are we going to see like an old school kind of Radiance build here? XXS getting gone on once again. They've got the full ink swell. He does finally manage to get the Phantom off of him and chains himself away. Mushi's looking for a turnaround, but this is a pretty long TP. What's he actually going to be able to find? He jumps in on top of DUI. There's the Dream Coil. They've also got XXS following it up. Looks like that was Mushi's salve. Getting XXS back into the fray. Over at mid lane, though, Ori sees this as an opportunity to pop the Exorcism and just starts trucking after Boboka, but Elder Titan a little bit too fast. And uh, Ori gonna have to walk away empty handed. Top tier one is getting pressured, so Aster at least finding some trades on the map while all of this is happening. Yang comes in here and gets a very quick D ward. And it looks like this Exorcism should be enough to get the tower down close to deny range. Glyph's already been used. Oh, Apparatus, you need to be careful. Once your HP drops against the timber, things start to get kind of dicey. Yeah, it's, it's just threatening him. He knows that the supports aren't anywhere nearby. Oop. Smell art. Alright, gets the fear. Nice. What build is he going for? Hasn't queued up anything just yet, so... Just gonna have to wait and see. The bear build seems super dead. I really doubt that he's going for Radiance, but maybe. Paparazzi forced into the spin. XXS thinking about chasing a little bit further. Does manage to land the Chakram. Healing Ward doing its best. Completely whiffs on the chain, so looking like Paparazzi is just going to be okay. And Mushi with another Dream Coil ready to go. He doesn't want to give away this tower for free to the Death Prophet, but at the same time, he's really the one that uh, needs to be the playmaker for his team. Oh, they get an entangle onto DY. He's in trouble. Boboka laying in with the punches. And down he goes. Alright, now Aster looking pretty good. 3k net worth lead, sitting on a decent chunk of experience. Though, oh my, what is up with this win probability? The win probability is still loving, uh, loving Vichy had them at 75% for most of this game. I guess it really just doesn't like the the Aster draft. Have to see. But you do have some nice vision over in the Radiant Jungle. Really setting up some plays. Actually, they've got a line of vision all the way across, just behind the Tier 1s on the Aster side. Aster have not got the same luxury. They've just placed slightly more defensive vision. But they are going to be waiting and just farming for a little while longer. I'll take that. Ori checking for any TPs coming in here just by sitting in these trees. Who's going to get the last? It looks like Fender might get the deny. No. Okay. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Ori does just snag that. Mushi, what are you up to? 1300 gold towards what I imagine is just going to be a straight up blink dagger. XXS is going for a holy locket, interestingly enough. So a nice tanky item for the timber star. He's doing pretty well in terms of farm. Uh, the Jug and the Sven, eh, both struggling a little bit aggressive, just tanking up a little bit more. And we are going to have Jug just going for a Yasha early on. Don't know if he's going to bother with a Battle Fury build or anything like that. Does need the Manta style against the Puck uh, and the Lone Druid this game. And Lone Druid is just going for the Radiance. All right. So very much a kind of timing push from Aster. Going to wait for the Blink, wait for the Radiance. Try and start mowing down some towers. They're looking towards this timber sock. Can they actually get in here with the stun, though? It doesn't look like it. Uh, Ori was not in the right position to make that work, and now getting turned around on somewhat with some damage. He's got three siphon charges and some stick. So should be okay. And I got the healing ward as well. Yang just holding on to top. Silar is taking full control over this top side of the map. Has a nice ward to scout things out for him. Mushi tanking some tower shots. Does have the salve at the ready. Needing to be a little bit careful though. Alright, there you go. There's the salve. Radiant structures are fortified. Right, even gonna pop the glyph here. I'll keep the siege creep alive a little bit longer. It gets a couple more hits. And Gref's is still gonna clean this out just fine. Are they going to use the Dream Curl to try and bring him down? They're chasing forward. There's the Dream Curl. Where's the TP response? He does pop the ultimate for a little bit more HP. DY coming in, trying to help out. They've also got the stop. Aggressive's dead, but the turnaround is coming. Can they get this Phantom off of Mushi? They do manage it. Or a chasing forward. He used the Exorcism for this. Vichy need a little bit more. They are going to deploy the will o -Wisp just to try and grab an additional kill. Baboka trying to get out of that circle of influence, but... Gets dragged back in. Meanwhile, at bottom, Paparazzi pops the Omni Slash and kills off Fenrir. 
So Vici just getting the two support kills for some pretty big ultimates being committed, but... Overall, I guess we're not going to figure out who it favors. Not going to get the full fight recap. Paparazzi, okay. Spin the wave. See you later. Yang needing to be careful, though his tranquil boots are still unbroken, so... Pretty easy for him to just juke his way out of there. Alright. So, Mushi has... what? Just opted to finish up a bunch of little items. He's picked up some treads. Now he's looking towards Boots of Travel right away, so no Blink Dagger, no Veil. I guess Veil's, eh, Veil's kind of useful because they're going to have the Radiance, but not that much synergy with his team, necessarily. I guess it's got some synergy with like the Natural Order, but not a whole lot of magical damage besides. Make success with his maxed out Reactive Armor and his Holy Locket doing just fine sustaining down bottom. Yang's just going into a 4 Staff. Jug does have enough for his uh, Yasha here. Yeah, paparazzi just waiting for the courier, it looks like. Actually, courier ended up dying in the midst of uh, one of these last engagements. Master still just slowly slapping buildings. Vici haven't really taken too many objectives themselves. Given that they have a Jug and uh and a Death Prophet. I feel like they have to be a little bit disappointed at the map control situation, but... Still farming alright. It's... To me, this game is just gonna come down to whether or not they can weather the Lone Druid push. Like this, this timing push from the Lone Druid is gonna be pretty scary, but... Is this Lone Druid build actually good? I can imagine that if he's gonna sit in the true form, then it is going to be fairly difficult for the Jug to do all that much. A lot of the Omni Slash is just going to get soaked up between the Bear and uh, Lone Druid himself. But Death Prophet is decent against the Bear with the Spirit Siphon, and I still think Vici have the, the better scaling overall. Mushi also thinking about it. Midas hasn't completely decided on what the skill build is going to be, or what the item build is going to be this game. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Alright. Final tier 1 tower about to be taken. Aster still looking to make some plays around this lone druid. Mushi has seemingly committed in for the Midas. They are going to be 5 manning a lot, so this is going to guarantee a little bit more of his level progression as Aster once again doing fantastically on the bounty runes. Vichy just kind of letting them get away with murder. They got all 4 of the 5 minute runes and now they're getting all 4 of the 15 minute runes. Are, are Vici going to take a fight anytime soon? I got the Yules and the Death Prophet now. Sven's still just working towards a Vlad's. No blink or anything for him. Jug just going for a Maelstrom. Still just kind of a farming item for Paparazzi. And now in the last couple of minutes we've ticked up to about a 6k net worth advantage in Aster's favor. About 2k experience. Aster, just probably five man, right? Oh, okay, big smoke to go and connect over to Mushi. What can they actually find? They need a little bit more vision down at the same time. Do leave an OBS over at mid. So they see that Aggressive is over here. They know that the Death Prophet is bottom. Looks like they might just set up for some kind of a trade. Just burning things away with the Lone Druid, but... Silar also going to end up revealing himself, though. It seems like Vici just don't actually want to take this fight. They do have good D-push. They can come back and spam once, uh... Aster try and threaten the high ground, but for now it seems like Vici just more than happy to push bottom. They are setting up something a little bit sneaky, just in case anyone comes back to defend. Just camping out this shrine, but I can't imagine that Aster are gonna do anything about bottom. They can just take top, they can swing mid. So it looks like it's just gonna be a bunch of trades across the map. Slightly favoring uh, Aster, I would say. They're gonna get maybe two tier twos, whereas Vici are only gonna get a tier one and a tier two, maybe. And they actually just send XXS in here to defend, and I... Even with all three of their cores here, it looks like Vici are not feeling confident to try and take this fight. Boca just tanking up a little bit more. He's grabbed some phase boots and now a couple of bracers. Ooh, or he's kind of looking at him. He's thinking about it. 
They've also got the jug connecting over. Silence coming in. Boboka won't be able to get the stomp off, but he's pretty fast. Can they actually finish this kill in time? Boboka's still alive. The Omni Slash bouncing around everywhere. It's mostly onto Mushi. They couldn't get a secondary slash onto Boboka. Paparazzi just gonna spin TP his way out of here after the Dream Coil's being forced. I don't know what Mushi was, was thinking with that one. It looks like Vichy should just be able to disengage completely. XXS is chasing, but they need an entangle on DY. Can they? Oh, yeah. Well, of course they get it on the first hit. There you go. So DY does pay for that aggression. Up top, Fenrir eh, getting run at a little bit. Is he dead? He's got the false promise. Should be able to keep himself alive. Stop coming through. They don't have Earth Splitter on Boboka. Hasn't even skilled it up. The Will-O-Wisp is there. They're going to keep Fenrir in the middle of this fight. XXS comes running in, wants to just deal with that Will-O-Wisp, but this is going to be 100 gold for him. But it's just a position 5 pickoff, and Vichy have used a lot of spells in the last couple of minutes. They bombed the Omni Slash, they've used the Will-O-Wisp, and Silar just, no hesitation, takes out that mid-tier 2 tower. Very farmed. 11.8k. Remains to be seen if they can actually deal with him this game as aggressive is just going to keep on pushing up bot. For Vichy, still very much seems like the game plan is delayed, delayed, delayed. They get the silence out of the jug. He gets four step four, but that breaks the coil immediately and Tigers, not Tigers, Aster just pop him. Oof. I don't even think this ward saw him. Oh, maybe it did. It just sees in here just a little bit. Alright, nice. Is under oh, and now Ori also kind of getting caught out. Spirit right on top of him, the, the bear is kind of getting blocked. Alright, there's the stomp. Not gonna chase up that hill though. Good discipline for Master. So now what? They can, eh, they're pretty bad at taking Roshan, actually. So, I guess they, they could do it slowly, but... For now, just seems like grab a little bit more farm. XXS has picked up a Bloodstone. He has, is this a secondary bloodstone queued up? I don't know if he's actually going to go for that. DY is just trying to cut waves, put down some wards, be a nuisance. But, Michi, where does their kill potential come from? I guess they just need to wait for this blink on the Sen. And then they actually have some semblance of initiation. If they can't get into the back lines and they can't find the Oracle, then they're just not going to be able to find any kills easily. 20 minute bouncer rings coming up. Alright, this time around, Vichy looks like they will be able to fight them off a couple of these. Aggressive comes in and grabs the one, and Vichy actually grabbed two over on the other side as well, so... Three bouncer rings for them. Ori... Ooh, gonna get Dream Coiled. Mushi's setting this one up. Ori just gonna look for the turnaround, perhaps. They've got a Glimmer Cape. The Fear is gonna snap the coil. Very nicely done. Will-O-Wisp helping out somewhat, but not enough to save the Death Prophet's life. Yang. He's fast, he's got a four staff, he's got his glimmer cape back off cooldown, looks like he will be okay. Paparazzi still doesn't even have this maelstrom. Very middling farm on a couple of these courts. I guess the one redeeming factor is that this Keeper of the Light has a bunch of gold, but... I don't know if that's going to be enough for Vichy to start winning some teamfights. Maybe once he gets this uh, refresher picked up, but... That's still going to take a little while. Master, I didn't say they were particularly great at Roche. It's going to be quite slow, but yeah, they know that there's stuff on cooldown, so why not just head right in here? Death Prophet still needs a little while to pick up the BKP. I don't, I don't feel like this Death Prophet pick has really done that much for Vichy this game. Did okay in lane against the Puck, but beyond that, just feels like we haven't really seen any impactful exorcisms and Vichy haven't really been pushing the pace so if you're just gonna play defensively like this why uh, why not just pick something with a little bit more scaling Aegis Lone Druid this is the timing it's a uh, a build I would say almost as old as, as Dota itself just going for this Midas Radiance and Head into the timing push shortly after that. Vichy are trying to set something up down at bottom, and Mushi is down here. He's already used the orb. He does have the blink ready to go. Phase shift also off cooldown, so going to be relatively difficult to bring him down, though there is a blink available on this Sven. He jumps forward, looking towards Boboka, who was just trying to echo stomp in the back lines. He's fast, though. Might be able to make it up onto the high ground, getting saved for now. Fenrir also getting chunked. 
They get a nice two-man dream coil out. Mushi making the spaces. Now Silar joins the fight with the bear. The Radiant Spurn gonna go to work. Ori popping the exorcism. They're committing everything that they have for this fight. The will o -Wisp coming off cooldown soon. Can they actually focus down this Death Prophet? She's feared, but still alive. The Healing Ward helping to keep everyone healthy. And it's just a support for support exchange so far. This is not a bad place for Vichy to take a fight. And they jump in, they got the Will-O-Wisp down. I don't think they should focus on the Lone Druid. Instead, they get the stun over onto the Puck. Fenrir trying for the save. Sylar actually going to end up losing his first life. And Paparazzi still has the Omni Slash. Deploys that out onto XXS. Not the best place for him. XXS still just kiting around on the edges of this fight. Do they actually have the damage for the Lone Druid? Mushi finally getting brought down. The Exorcism wearing out. This is where the Timber Saw should be able to go to work as they get an Entangle on the Sven. Paparazzi on the retreat. And Ori also getting pinned in here. Looks like he's just going to try and sacrifice himself to make sure that everyone else gets out of here. Yang's still got items off cooldown, so I think he should be okay. Though so, uh, XXS is still chasing him. Nah, he's, he's too fast. I think. XXS still wants this. He's still going, but, uh, no, never mind. Keeper of the Light just trots away. So, we didn't have any buybacks expended in that fight. Uh, Aster did end up losing the Aegis, but overall seemed to do just fine. Nice place for Vichy to take a fight over on the other side of the map, so they're not immediately at risk of losing uh, any buildings. Like, look at this. The Aster are only just getting into position for this tier 2 now, and everybody on Vichy has uh, already respawned. So, very heads up play to try and fight outside of the base. They don't want this high ground siege to kick off with the, the Lone Druid. Yeah, there's almost an AC up on Silar. Mushi still just working that Midas, has picked up a Yule Scepter. And XXS inside of the base, but very tanky. Can they actually get him out of here? We do have the Will-O-Wisp back up cooldown soon, Exorcism 20 seconds to go. Paparazzi is still working on his Manta style, but Silar's Bear just going to start slapping this tier 3. It's blinding like can help out a little bit. Mushi jumps in, wants this initiation. He's going to get immediately silenced though. Nice combination coming in from the Grimstroke that helps to control the Timber Saw as well. The Earth Splitter's coming through, won't connect onto anybody. Will-O-Wisp keeping everybody inside of the base. Jug spins forward, still 12 seconds to go on the Omni Slash. They bring down Mushi, or can they? He's got the Yules, he's got the Phase Shift, but no, doesn't get the Phase off. Does get finished off by Ori's nuke as he lands on top of that, and XXS whiffs a little bit on that timber chain. That might be trouble for him, uh, but does get a bit further away. Fenrir might not be quite so lucky. Paparazzi closing the gap. Looks like Paparazzi just wants this uh, Oracle kill. Is he going to expend the Omni Slash to get it? Ooh, nice four step forward to grab the Bounty Rune, and Fenrir getting completely surrounded and burst down. Oh, quick little D-Ward for a DUI. Alright, nice for him. That ward didn't even have... Hardly had any duration left either. Oh, Silar. Alright, they've got a dust. Nice. DUI's dead. It's gonna be Silar's AC. But a successful hold for Vichy. Does Dota Plus still like them that much? No, it's back to... 50-50. Anyone's game at this point. Heading towards 5k experience, dropping down below 10k gold. But a little bit worrying for this uh, this Aster lineup if they do get rebuffed one or two more times. I, I think they're actually in big trouble. Jug's starting to catch up a little bit, picking up a bit more farm. We'll be going for the Mjolnir. Uh, what's the Death Prophet got? She's got her BKB now, so 10 second BKB ready to go for Ori. Mushi still doing okay, but... No huge items or anything. An Aghanim Scepter for Mushi would be such a big deal this game. Just completely annihilates the Jug. Pretty difficult for the... Well, the Sven doesn't have magic immunity just yet, but... Uh, gonna be very annoying for the Death Prophet as well. So, let's see how this goes. Roshan's still dead for at least another three minutes. Yeah, what's the vision situation looking like? So, Aster have a little bit of vision outside of the... Vichy base. Looks like they're mostly setting up to try and push bottom. And Vichy have a little bit of deep vision, but not really that much. How's that refresher orb going, actually? Just the one Perseverance so far. 
Sven's going for an Echo Saber into a BKB. Grimstroke's got a secondary Glimmer Cape that we saw a little bit earlier. Who actually has current gold? It's mostly just the Jug, and he's just going for the Mjolnir, as I said earlier. So they are connecting to their Juggernaut. Lines have been drawn. Vici don't have a ton of vision for this gank, but they know that the Lone Druid is somewhere around top. So that's where this is going to take them. I do get an Observer Ward down here. I think it's just out of range of the... Oof, just, just out of range of the center. They get the sounds up on the Silar. He's not in his true form, but they do have the Oracle in the good position to try and save him. Fenrir dropping everything that he's got, but now the Soulbind coming in. Omni Slash bouncing ground, but they find a creep wave. Paparazzi can even kill Fenrir. He will be able to. They're still focusing on the Silar, but the Sven is already dead. They're still chasing further forward. They finally bring down the Lone Druid XXS. Will he be enough damage for this fight? They get the stun up onto the Elder Titan, the Dream Coil, not stopping Paparazzi. He's just chopping through everybody. XXS trying with the Bloodstone heal to keep himself alive. Fenrir still doing everything that he can. He's already bought back in this fight. XXS, can he get inside of the base? Yules will control him. Do they have another silence? He gets up inside and looks like he will be okay. It's a three for one with a buyback, but Vici expending literally everything that they had for that fight. Uh, Silar just kind of caught asleep at the wheel. Was not expecting such a deep gank. Aster seemingly not expecting that Vici are going to be so aggressive in this position. It kind of makes sense given the way that Vici have been playing. You know, they've been playing possum a lot of the time. Yeah, is DY dead? Uh, they've been playing possum a lot of the time, but these these calculated moves to go for this fight behind the the bottom tier two and now running up onto this high ground and finding the Silar kill, that's that's what they need to just keep on dragging this game out that little bit more. Jug still closing in on that number one net worth spot is gonna be going for the butterfly next. He's now got level 18, so has the maxed out Omni Slash. In general, Vici still scaling nicely, and this is where Aster just start to fall off. Mushi does have the Aghanim Scepter, but the next 5-10 minutes, I think, really has to be their timing. They have to find that first plane of Rax in that next little bit. They can go and take out the Shrines. They did get the Tier 3 earlier, so they can take out the Shrines and set up for a Roshan, but... Cannot afford too many more slip-ups. Especially if the Keeper of the Light gets this Refresher Orb. Like, at that point, their team fight is just done. They really do not have good ways to deal with the, the double Will-O-Wisp. Tire oh. scan. Spot Silar. He's still just sitting in ranged form. It's to be careful. Happy just jumps up the high ground looking for him. Nice glimmer caped up. Looks like it is going to be three bounty runes this time around for Aster. So Mushi is going to go and put a little bit of pressure on bottom, kind of splitting the map. Gucci still just sort of playing their jungle, grabbing a little bit more farm, grabbing a few more items. Uh, Roshan going to be the next big objective for both of these two teams, and he will be respawning in 45 seconds time. What do we got? Minus 25 seconds battle cry cooldown. Oracle's still no town. Only level 10, jeez. We got level 10 heroes and level 21 heroes in the same game. I feel like Fenrir's been playing... He's been playing reasonably well. Good positioning, but... Unfortunately, the False Promise is just not the best at saving these heroes. Like, they can't really just man up with the False Promise and take a fight. I would imagine that Aster would also probably look at buying a gem sometime soon. Uh, but Boca's BKB going to be a pretty big deal in terms of just wading into these fights and making things happen. But Vici, another aggressive smoke. This is a deep move. They don't even, again, they don't really even have that much vision here. They're going to try and go for this kill on Mushi. He does manage to phase shift out. Force Staff gets him down onto the low ground. Needs to deal with the Phantom. Will manage to do so. But these blind ganks from Vici have actually been working fantastically. And they're looking for more now, even. XXS, they're just going to ignore him, running into the back lines. Aggressive is going to get controlled somewhat. They're looking towards Silar. He's just waddling around in the middle of this fight. He gets linked over to his bear. XXS is doing what he can, but now the Omnislash comes in. Paparazzi puts the Lone Druid in the grave. Do they even have the damage to kill off Aggressive? Will-O-Wisp is controlling the other side of the fight. Timbersaw now silenced. They are going to try and save him with the False Promise. Is it going to be enough? Can he get into the base? He's just getting chain-stunned here. 
permanently finally makes it out the Bloodstone heal. Amplified up is also going to help keep him alive, but it doesn't feel like the timber is really too much of a problem. And Vichy, with all of their sustain, with that healing ward, they're still on full HP. They can just go and do whatever they want. XXS chasing forward a little bit further, but they've got four stabs, they've got the glimmer capes, should be fine, and needs to be careful about coming outside of the base like this. Boboka not in a great position. Looks like he might be the next one to fall. Uh, actually, never mind. Vichy just kind of getting baited. Somewhat. Is there a dream curl soon? Five seconds. Happy has to blink a little bit before that. Mushi's just trying to catch something. Silar respawning in 18. Vichy won't find an opportunity to get the Roshan if this just continues to go the way that it is. Do they have any vision for this? They've got a sentry on the high ground. Now they get the Dream Coil over onto Yang. He's completely stuck here for an eternity. Slept up as well. Down he goes. Jug Illusions doing their best to push out mid, but with both supports dead, Vichy actually... Okay, they, they, they got a little bit baited there, and Astronaut scout the Roche. It's still not very fast, but... Pretty decent. Tyler, what, what, you, gotta, you gotta get this bear away from bottom. You, you need this bear to kill Roche. Alright, there you go. But does this Roshan mean anything? I guess the Aegis on Silar is going to be pretty useful. He has just, in the last two fights, been completely trucked down. Anyone? Cheese? Hello? Alright, yep. Silar also- is he also going to take the cheese? Is anyone going to take the cheese? Alright, XXS is going to take the cheese. Side lanes need to be dealt with, so they're going to send Timber Bottom. He's got Boots of Travel to be able to rejoin the team in 30 seconds time. And for Bichi, you just need to see if they can figure out some way to wait out this Aegis. Jug is buying up items, so not saving for buyback on the Vici cores, it looks like. They are just gonna uh, grab whatever upgrades they can. Net worth still hovering around 10k, experience is touched back down to zero, and win probability is still kind of in this 40-60 uh, split. As Aster are just gonna go for a straight up smoke. They're pretty happy with the position of their lanes, they're gonna double damage on this spirit bear. There is a Glyph and all of the deep push to contend with, and Vici might just try and fight up here on their Shrine Dream Coil. Catches onto two, they immediately force staff the Juggernaut, stunning him up, but the force staff from Yang gets Paparazzi a little bit further away, so he's actually going to be okay for this fight. Mushi buying a little bit more time, Siler's up on the high ground, Ori still feeling confident with the Shrine, the Exorcism's going to work, but Vici are getting somewhat split up in this fight. Yang and DY both trying to help out, Paparazzi will just push forward aggressively, and they look to focus onto the Timbersaw. He managed to get the cheese off, but he's still silenced, and he's getting dragged in by the ultimate of the Keeper of the Light. Another sound's coming through. That's going to prompt the False Promise Paparazzi just chopping wood onto the Timber. Do they have enough damage to bring him down? We'll see right as the False Promise ends. He does get chunked a little bit. Silar rejoining this fight. Aggressive, not in a great position. But they've got the Glimmer Cape. The support play from Vici has been fantastic in this team fight. They saved the, they saved the Jug. They keep the Sven alive now. That was a lot of ultimates expended, though the Omni Slash is still available. And Aster, instead of trying for the fight, are just going to try and go for the buildings instead. XXS pretty tanky. The Spirit Bear also quite survivable up on the front lines. Nice pullback from Silar. Okay. So they get the Glyph forced. Yang's got the Blinding Light soon. Pushes the bear in a little bit further. Can they actually kill it? Sven thinking about the stun, but Blink gets cancelled by the Radiance. A little bit more focus. Fenrir, does he have a save here? Looks like XSS is actually going to be okay. Boboka gets a nice Echo Stomp out, but Paparazzi still feeling pretty confident. Doesn't have the spin, but Dream Curl not too much of an obstacle, and these fights are just becoming very weird. Like, it's seemingly no one can kill anyone, so Aster just going to go for Shrines instead. Or he's going for Shivas. Aggressive almost has his BKB. Very much wants to grab that soon. Ooh, and now they've got the Refresher Orb on the Keeper of the Light. This, this is this is honestly super worrying for Aster. Like the Lone Druid is already getting to the point where he doesn't really scale too much harder. What's his 25 talent now? Base attack time, battle cry against Spillamy. Yeah, okay, it's, it's pretty good. 
So that's that's still a fairly big power spike. Still working on an MKB. Uh, Vici have the lanes in an okay position. Mid lane's gonna meet around the middle. They've got bottom lane pushed out with the jug illusions. Top lane, Aster. They do have some vision around there, but nobody heading over to push that out just yet. Uh, nothing for them to really threaten, so it looks like Vici. What are they gonna do? They don't even want to try for the tier 2 tower. They're just gonna chill out, maybe wait for Aggressive's item to get delivered. Keep on farming on this jug. How close is the jug to number one? Okay. So he's, he's now taken up the number two spot. Next item is going to be a basher. Starting to get a little bit slot limited. I guess we'll see Abyssal Blade before too long. And then, what? Moonshard, Boots of Travel. Paparazzi also getting pretty close to capped out. Oops. Paparazzi. Really confident on the front lines here, but needs to be careful. That Dream Coil damage is huge. Can they keep him alive? The bear's still focusing on him. The Earth Splitter might do it. They finally bring him down. The double ultimate from the Keeper of the Light is going to work, though. Mushi can't get a single spell off. What can they actually do here? Sven's just getting punched down. Baboka in the middle of this team fight, putting the aura onto everybody, and it's just way too much damage. It's Baboka with the triple kill. Ori's still going to try and stand here and fight, but realizing that this is not going their way. He is just going to be forced to TP out, and Mushi making the play with the Dream Coil. Jug feeling confident, but gets zero damage out in that fight. Well, I mean, 582. Maybe he got a meal near proc somewhere, but... Jug's dead for 40 seconds, and Aster have just found their opportunity to push up onto the high ground. That's a second tier 3 dead. Ori's exorcism's only going to last for another couple of seconds, and Aster might just be able to go for the game at this point. That or the Mega Creeps, XXS was thinking about it. Saw him waddling over, but instead Aster just going to take the, the couple of lanes of Rax. They got to get back to her protection disabled once again. Looks like this creep wave at mid is just enough. And they still have another 20 seconds. Dream Coil back up. Uh, Mushi could just look for another 4 staff combination with his coil, but might save it for the Juggernaut. Once he respawns, no, never mind! Pushes Ori forward, chain stun, nothing that DY can do to save him. They've got the Jug back up now, but they're not a, they're not going to have a base before too long. And that is Mega Creeps in favor of Aster. Just... All they needed to do was completely pop the Juggernaut, and from that point the fight looked super easy. And like I said earlier, the Vici cores, they, they haven't been saving for buyback, just trying to get every little item and upgrade that they can. And the, the, the damage from Boboka in that last fight was ridiculous. He's got the 70 attack speed, he's got an Echo Saber, he's got his BKB. I mean, he's, he's, he's a support, in air quotes. He's only got 10k net worth, but he hits damn hard and Vichy what have they got for they've only really got the Vlads for armor once the uh, once that natural order is on them like the jug doesn't have any plus armor items he's just got a butterfly so all of his armor or a lot of his armor is just base armor Dyer's bottom shrine is under attack plus 245 all right Dyer's bottom shrine has fallen and with that, I guess uh, Aster just do whatever they want. Wait for Roshan, farm up a little bit more. Who's got current gold? Mushi's got current gold. Isn't even level 25 just yet. All right. Got the MKB on the Spirit Bear. Timber has grabbed himself an Aghanim Scepter. Not great at fighting inside of the base. Poor old Timber Saw, not a whole lot of trees for mobility there, but should do just a fine with the Aghanim Scepter, kind of making up for that. Do have a gem now grabbed for Avicii. What, are, what can they do? Have they even they haven't even completely dewarded their base. There's, there's still vision inside here. All right, they are going to go for a smoke anyway. Trying to head out and find something. Can they find Silar? Inside of his uh, ranged form once again. Looks like they might be able to. Ori's going to come running forward. Can they get this Yules or anything onto him? They're going to lock in onto the bear. XXS arrives into the fight. It's straight into a silence. It's straight into the soul bind. Silar does transform over. Pops the battle cry. They're looking towards the Death Prophet. Didn't get the BKB off. Too much stun onto Ori. Mushi still has a Dream Coil ready to go. That's the secondary coil up for him. Paparazzi 
has used the Omni Slash, but they haven't managed to kill Silar just yet. There's Dream Coil number two. So much stun on Paparazzi. He's just gone. DY split off to the other side of the fight, and Vici are done. GG is called by Ori, and Aster are going to be taking game number one here. Looked a little bit touch and go with a couple of those fights. Um, you know, it did seem like Vici were starting to get kind of a foothold back in, but... Aster getting that crucial pickoff on the jug right at the moment that they needed it. And, uh... B I don't know. Boboka How much damage did Boboka do that game? Yeah, okay. So Boboka did, did 20k. Silar did 25k. Or 25.6 for reference. So... The Elder Titan more than carrying his, uh... His weight in that game. And I don't know. Maybe we'll see Elder Titan getting, getting banned out in the next game. I also don't think that this Death Prophet pick... Really did all that much for Vici. I guess it looked it looked okay, but and we didn't really see the true potential. Well, we kind of saw the true potential of the Keeper of the Light with the refresher, but unfortunately, they just did not have the follow up damage. So we're gonna head to a break, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'll catch you in just a couple of minutes for game number two of Vici versus Aster here for the China qualifiers of your next Dota two minor.